So, Paul, we'll get on to Pep Clotet in just a moment. But first of all, Tilt and Talk. Yeah, Tilt and Talk show. Um, we've managed to keep the show going during the lockdown via Zoom uh, to keep our fans connected and in touch with us. Um, my colleague, um, Craig Courtney, has managed to get some very special guests for us as well along the way. Um, so we've managed to get quite a few ex-players to join us as well. Uh, none other than the uh, one and only Robbie Savage this coming Monday night as well. Um, and we had the uh, legendary Liam Dash last week. Um, and as well as that, we've had Martin Granger, Dili Adibola, um, and various other great players to play for us over the years as well. Um, obviously, it's a lot more easier via Zoom because obviously they don't have to travel to uh, the studio to see us. So, um, although when we were in the studio before the lockdown, we did manage to still get some very special guests in as well. But obviously, you know, it's um, it, it's very good on, on Zoom as well because obviously, you know, you get more chance, don't you, of getting them on. I suppose the good thing as well, if you're going to have ex-Blues players on that Barry Fry signed, you'll never run out of guests. Exactly right, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> he had a squad of about 60 players, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, I like him, yeah, I'll sign him. I'll go and talk to Karen Brady. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll have him, I'll have him. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have him. But uh... Yeah, they were, great time. they were great times under his management down the Blues, mm. they were. Well, they so, got... Uh, they got the club up and running again, a combination of, of obviously Barry Fry in the dugout, but Sullivan, Gold, Brady. We know the way it ended, but at least at the very start, you know, I mean, it was the Kumars before, wasn't it? And that, that, that time doesn't even, you know, bear thinking about as far no. as Blues, Blues are concerned. So, so have you, have you coped? I mean, you've been doing the show during the lockdown, but, but have you managed to keep your spirits up? Yeah, still working full time. Um, so I'm a I'm a sales coach. Uh, that's my full time job. So I'm basically uh, coach and train and mentor field salespeople. Um, so I've been doing all my sort of um, duties on Microsoft Teams, uh, which has been an absolute godsend. Um, and moving forwards, even after this is all over, I think one thing we've learned is we don't necessarily need to travel around the country so much and you know um, do so much you know face to face. Obviously, mm -hmm. it's great to, to 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 liaise and see people face to face, but you know, when, you, when you're going like over the other side of the country for a meeting that's only an hour and a half, you know, you can just jump on there, can't you? And say, absolutely. Uh, yes, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Robbie Savage uh, coming on on Monday, you say? Yeah. And, uh, well, without wanting to give anything away, I mean, what, uh, are you going to get from him what Dion Dublin said? that we'll night? Be because, we'll I've we'll be because I've asked Dion Dublin uh, okay. and he wouldn't say. He just okay. would not. He just would not give it up. He, he was, he's always like very uh, sort of guarded and like, no, it's done. It's over with. Me and Robbie have worked on the BBC since, and we're we're, yeah. we're calling it, and it's done. But it, it's like the big unanswered question, isn't it? What what yeah. did Robbie Savage say to Dion Dublin on that night at Villa Park in March two thousand and three? Yeah, yeah. I think to be honest as well, it was probably a lot about what he was doing on the pitch before it actually happened as well, because obviously he was a wind-up merchant, wasn't yeah. he, on the pitch? Well, I remember, that, I mean, I, just from my point of view, it, it, was a, it was a horrible, but it was a horrible game. It was just horrible all the way through, wasn't it? And, um... Oh, no, it was great. I loved it. <laughs> 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 well, no, well, that, but yeah, it, it was the game that made sure that if they meet in the league again, it should never be at eight o'clock on a Monday night. I think that was the, no, no. I, that, I, I remember saying at the time, why not? That was the point. Off at eight o'clock on a Monday night, even the first game as well. Well, the, that's the point with the second one. They didn't learn from the first one. That, no, that was that, that was the. But but anyway, um, so whenever the twenty twenty one season starts, um, Blues will more than likely have a new head coach in the dugout. Um, Something of a bombshell this week when Pep Clutter announced that that he was he was going to move on. Mm. Yeah, it, it's it came to me as a bit of a surprise. Obviously, he'd recently signed as a as a full time because obviously before that he was the temporary head coach, and now he recently signed the contract to become permanent head coach. And you know, so soon after that, for me, it's been it's become a bit of a surprise. Now, whether he's going to go back, obviously, to Spain to be with his family. Um, would he have come out and said that? Obviously, rather than coming out and saying he's going, going to seek other coaching opportunities. Um, does he see himself as more of a, a number two than a number one? I, I, I don't know. I, don't, I think there is more to it than what meets the eye. I said that on the show on Monday night because mm -hmm. you don't give up what you've got, do you, unless you've got something better to go into. And mm -hmm. I don't think Pep Clotet is going to get a better um, job than head coach of Birmingham City Football Club. Yeah, there's always um, things running in the background at Birmingham City, and it, it's always the challenge of whoever the uh, the manager or the head coach is going back as far as as Alex McLeish, really. Uh, yeah. To um, keep things uh, on a level footing and and make sure that the results are 
um, what they need to be. Um, the, the fans are very honest with with Blues. You know, if they're giving it their all on the pitch and they're getting results, you know, it's not nice what's going on in the background, but they can they can cope with it. And I think we've we've seen in the past, particularly with the likes of, of Chris Hewton and Gary Rowett and uh, and Gary Monk, um, we didn't know at the time that Gary Monk left. That perhaps what we know now in, in terms of um, uh, as his employers, I mean, the, the much maligned employ, uh, owners of Birmingham City, you know, ha- had a policy which uh, allegedly uh, Gary Rowett broke in terms of trying to sign players. Um, I, I think, could you pinpoint the fact where, yes, the Blues were, were getting some decent results on the pitch, particularly at home during the season, but um, the, the spat or the supposed spat between Gary Monk and Pep Clotet going into the Sheffield Wednesday game. I, I, I think that got a lot of Blues fans on side as well because, mm. uh, because things came out that we didn't necessarily know when Gary Rowett, uh, Gary Rowett, sorry, Gary Monk was sacked. Yeah, I'm, I don't know the full story. Um, obviously, from a fan sitting in the stands watching the games, um, I was pleased with what I was watching from the team, particularly the fact that he had that nine-point deduction hanging over his head for more or less the whole season. He couldn't sign any players, really. Obviously, the only player that he paid any money for, really, he got into trouble for, obviously, with Pedersen at left-back, who was a great signing. Mm-hmm. Um, so, well, well, he never got into trouble for the club did. Um, you know, so, considering the actual tools he had to work with, I thought he did a great job, Gary Monkey had us playing some really good football. He took us back to basics, 4-4-2. You know, the partnership with Djokovic and Adams was fantastic for the season. Um, and, and, obviously, we had, obviously, Hotter on the one flank, Magoma on the other, and... You know, it was very um, sort of tried and tested and it got results. Um, and I, for one, was very disappointed when Gary Monk left. Now, mm-hmm. obviously, we don't know the full story and we don't even know if it's true because the way I look at it is if it was true, then wouldn't it, would it, you know, that's a crime, isn't it? So would he, yeah. not be, would he not even be locked up by now and not even be in any other jobs, you know? Mm-hmm. So who knows? We, we don't know. It's all, um, you know, it's all, we, we just don't know. It's all ifs and buts. We don't know. And part of the brief for Pep Clotet was a more continental sort of attractive style of football, a, a, a passing game. And he was working towards that. It's not always possible with the, 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 the players that you've got. You have to do with, deal with what you've got. But obviously, Blues bring young players through. There's obviously talk about Jude Bellingham and what have you. Yeah. But I think what impressed me the most, and I'd like to get your thoughts on this, is that they managed to get that philosophy in place when Coventry City are playing at the ground as well. And you th- and you think what that so St Andrews is being used competitively every single Saturday and that's going to turn yeah. the pitch up, but they still stuck to their guns and played a, and played a nice brand of attractive football. So I, I give I don't know about you, but I give Pep Clotet a lot of credit for that. Yeah, I mean he started out the season with the three at the back, um, trying to play, roll it out from the keeper, you know, like Real Madrid, that sort you know sort of Champions League style. But that's never going to work with the players that we've got. We saw that under Gianfranco Zola, you know, mm-hmm. and I did feel sorry for that guy because he was trying to get us to play some good football and at times some of the interplay under him was, was excellent but you know the results were absolutely appalling um, you know we couldn't we couldn't score in one end and we couldn't keep it at the other end and it was just a disastrous time results wise mm-hmm. if we maybe would have had a better squad to work with I think it might have been a different story but um, Pep tried that at the start of the season and then he reverted back to last season on the 4-4-2 and the tried and tested and again results started to improve mm-hmm. you know so, certainly since Scott Hogan's come in to work with with Djokovic as well yeah. So, uh, what what sort of names are in the frame then uh, to start next season? Um, well, I'm, I'm hearing Lee Bowyer is now the favourite. Um, how true that is, I don't know. Um, whether Craig Gardner is going to be put in place, obviously, he'd be um, obviously an internal promotion again. Um, whether that's a possibility, I don't know. Uh, my personal choice would be I'd love to see Chris Shooting come back um, or Yukanovic, the old Fulham manager because um, we've already got his assistant manager anyway. Mm-hmm. So that would make sense to me. And obviously, he's got a promotion on his CV with Fulham. Um, so, you know, that, that would be my first choices. But whoever comes in, for me now, I think the way forward is to, to let, you know, let the manager um, make decisions on transfers and football, the football side, you know, because I just think there's too much interference from above, you know. And, and, and what's the old saying, you know, if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, you know, insanity is the same thing. Doing, uh, sorry, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Absolutely. You know, if if not, not just the managers, but if the owners keep doing it the way they're doing it, I just think we're never going to go anywhere. Yeah, and for better or worse, the EFL are always going to be sniffing around with these guys in charge as well, aren't they? And, yeah. and, and I know that Blues fans are a lot of, you know, um, we, we can't repeat the slogans uh, on here that, that Blues 
that you've seen Blues fans say towards the EFL, but you can understand the sentiment in that, 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 yeah. they've, that they've gone after them uh, and uh, and been found not guilty. And, th- and then the EFL have taken it upon themselves to appeal that. You know, yeah. one thing I would say for Blues fans, and, and, and okay, this is, this is me being perfectly uh, objective, so um, you, you can shout all over it if you want. I think Birmingham City and Blues fans are at their best when it's backs to the wall, nobody likes us, we don't care. Absolutely if, it, if, right. if, if, if it's if it, if it's allowed to sort of drift along and it's all nice and it's all, I, I, th- I think they I think they tend to lose focus and sometimes they they think about expectation and it, and it never quite happens for them. Nobody likes us. We don't care. St Andrews full rocking fortress, different kettle of fish altogether. And I think that's when they're at their best. And I think that the sentiment of the defiance towards the air fellas but brought, brought out a lot of the best in uh, the Birmingham City fans during this period. That's just just my view. I think you're absolutely spot on. Um, in my time, I remember the Ipswich semi-final. I remember the West Ham semi-final. You know, a hostile atmosphere for the away team to come into. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Alex Ferguson, Sir Alex Ferguson famously said, I hate coming here. Mm-hmm. You know, um, he'd been to Galatasaray and he'd, he'd rather go to Galatasaray mm-hmm. than a full St Andrews, yeah. um, you know, on a weeknight because mm-hmm. the atmosphere, when it, when it gets rocking, it's one of the best atmospheres in the country, if not the best, you know. Mm-hmm. Certainly one of the best, well, certainly the best I've been in. Yeah. How do you feel, I mean, the, the lockdown is... It, well, of course, it's never changed, but it's all about the Premier League, and the Premier League is the be-all, end-all. Championship largely forgotten um, during during this point, but they they had to keep playing the Championship if they decided that the Premier League was was going to be restarted come hell or high water, because you've got promotion and relegation to sort out. Le- um, leagues one or, or two weren't overly concerned with that. They, they, they had points per game, but are going to hold the playoffs behind. Um, closed doors. How far off the playoffs are Blues now? Um, I'd have to look, but I think it's probably a good 10 points, I would have thought. Nine, ten points, something like that. Yeah, so we'd have to go on a really good run. It happens, there. though. It happens every oh, year. Uh, one team in the Championship does that. I mean, Villa did it last year. Fulham did it. You know, it, yeah, it, and, it does and, happen. And, and our form before it ended as well wasn't too bad. I mean, I know we lost the last game against Reading at home, but before that, you know, it was on a on a decent run. So, and Hogan was banging the goals in. Um, so, if he carries on doing that, um, and and you know we can we can pick up some sort of form and get on a winning run. You never know, do you? Is Blues just a better fit for Scott Hogan than than Villa? Is it is it that simple? I think a lot of it is to do with Djokovic. Um, if you're a striker like Scott Hogan is, and Shay Adams again is no coincidence. He's gone to Southampton and he's struggling at Southampton as well. Um, and I know he's Premier League a different level, um, but if you've got a strike partner like Lukas, Lukas Djokovic who does all the you know all the dirty work, holds the ball up, um, creates a lot of chances for you. You know, lays a lot of chances down for you. You know, he's, he's one of the best, well, he's probably the best player I've ever seen at the Blues in my time in the air, you know, mm-hmm. taking headed chances. He's the best mm-hmm. I've ever seen. Mm-hmm.